this is the first time I am back in the garage since I hurt myself. Yes, this time, well, I have a plastic bag to cover the, the boot. But uh, yeah, this time I hurt my right ankle. Last year, a little bit more than a year ago, I broke my left ankle. This time it's not broken. I just stepped off the ledge in the wrong way, I guess, and hurt my ankle again. My ankle is not broken, but I have to do some more tests because I may have issues with my tendon or my ligament. I don't know how difficult it's gonna be to do the work with the boot and the crutches, but make it work. If you've been following our build for a while, you've probably been wondering when we're gonna to get to that crazy rolling bed idea. Well, the time has come. Just to refresh your memory, our design is for a two position bed system that will actually roll up along the back wall. The main reason we're doing this is because we wanted two separate areas, the bed and the dinette, that could be used at the same time, but also didn't take up a huge chunk of space when you weren't using it. We've never seen this done before. This is an idea that Greg came up with a long time ago, and as you're about to see, it's going to take a lot of work and finesse to make it happen. We're gonna show you a basic overview of the design and build of the bed system in this video, but we're not gonna drill down and go super in depth, in part because we wanna get on the road and make sure the design is working before we show you guys exactly how to replicate it for yourselves. So in the future, we are gonna do a more detailed build video dedicated just to the bed system. And Greg will also be sharing his CAD designs later on to help anyone who might wanna do this for themselves. Before we could install the bed, we need to install our counters because the design had the bed rolling over the counter on one side. The design of our kitchen, which we'll show you in the next video, calls for our countertop to be cut into three pieces. They look awesome. I am so excited with how they came out. So this is one piece. This piece is actually gonna lift up on some gas struts. This is obviously for the sink. And then on the other side of this lift off will be this section that'll have our stove. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to get these in. This is actually the first time that I've used a spray on poly and oh my gosh, it is so smooth, no bubbles, no sanding. This stuff is awesome. So we were just, just about to install our countertops right here. I started taking the three pieces from the other garage into our main work garage to bring into the camper. And when I did that, I noticed that two of the pieces are cracking underneath. The garage that we had them stored in is climate controlled. It was 68 degrees in there. So I don't think they're cracking from extreme temperature change. I honestly don't know why they're cracking. Um, and they're not just cracking at the, the joints of where the, you know, the wood was glued together by the manufacturer. They're cracking in the middle too. So this is not great. <laughs> Um, the reason we are trying to put the countertops in now is because our current design required the countertop to be in, in order for the headboard kind of storage area to be built back here. And in order for us to put the bed in, because part of the bed rolls over the countertops. Um, so Greg and I are, we're like looking at these cracking countertops and not really sure what to do. Um, you can put a screw in underneath to, you know, to pull together where it's cracking right now. My concern is that it's going to crack more later when we get on the road. And with that current design, we wouldn't be able to change the countertops without taking the headboard and the bed and like the entire back half out. Um, so that would suck. I don't know. I don't know why they're cracking. I don't just yet another thing that we have to deal with. So last uh, minute change. So I'm gonna 
So I'm adding like a support here for the headboard for the bed and also uh, basically where the bed can be rolling. Originally it was supposed to be on the countertop but since our countertop is kind of cracking and it don't seem to be great quality um, we decided to change our uh, to change the design such a way that uh, when we need to replace the countertop we don't have to tear everything out we'll just be able to remove the countertop a lot it's gonna be a lot easier to remove the countertop so. So today we are finally going to install the bed. Ever since I tried to describe this concept in our floor plan video, people have been, rightfully, very intrigued and really excited to see this. Um, I include myself in people because this is 100% Greg's design, Greg's concept, Greg's baby, and I cannot wait to see this go in and working. The fun part is going to be getting this inside with just the two of us and with Greg having a boot on his ankle. I think right now the plan is to take it in two pieces and assemble it over the unfinished kitchen area. Right now it's going to be manual as far as the rolling mechanism. We wanna get it in there, make sure everything works, and then we'll order the actuators and this thing will be electric. Greg's design, he unfortunately forgot about this trim ring. So the bed isn't able to slide all the way up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just kind of notch out right here and see if that works. Worst case, we can actually make our mattress one inch shorter, cut the whole back off, but we're gonna try to avoid having to do that. After trying the bed, we realized the middle needed a little bit more support, so we took it out so that Greg could add some aluminum underneath. Do you want to try rolling it? This mattress is perfect for this. Look at that. I know. It worked. Oh my gosh. I mean, and it's not falling out or anything. We did it. Pretty good. I'm really, really happy with this mattress. Like, it's perfect. I thought you were going to say I'm very, very happy with the design. Yeah, the design too, honey. After taking a few moments to enjoy the fruits of our labor, we took out the mattress so it wouldn't get dirty, we installed our countertops, and moved on to working on our dinette table. All right, so this is our leftover countertop that we are gonna use for our dinette table. We've already sanded it. We cut some radiuses on the corner so that when you're getting into the dinette, it's just a little bit easier. Also looks a little bit nicer. Um, and we went ahead and sanded and rounded the corners. So when you're sitting there, it's gonna feel pretty good. Obviously this countertop came with some stain on it. It only had one coat of stain. 
So even if this piece had been in perfect condition, you'd still need to put at least two more coats on, but it had some imperfections. The corner was super damaged that we cut off. So I just kind of sanded it all down with 220 and now I'm gonna stain it. The smell of stain or any kind of like stain-like product reminds me of my childhood. Like I think everyone has scents and smells that remind them of when they were a kid and this is definitely one of mine. I told that to my mom recently and she thought that was weird, but <laughs> When I was growing up, my dad was building the house that they would retire in. And when I say building, I definitely mean building. He had someone come in and put the shell up and he was finishing everything out himself. So, I mean, really similar to what we're doing with this ambulance when you think about it. But I feel like he was always in the garage staining something. Before he passed away, Greg and I built, I guess what is our first rig that I always forget about, which was an all wood teardrop trailer. Um, and he was just like amazed that we built this thing all by ourselves. So I have to think that he would think this whole project is pretty great. All right, so I'm gonna let this dry for about 15 minutes and then I'm gonna wipe it down with a new rag and then I'll let it dry overnight. Tomorrow I'll come back and do a light sand, another coat, repeat that whole process one more time, and then I'll put the clear coat on, and I guess I'll be done. So I am working on the bed. So we have now a bed that is sliding successfully, but it's manpower and uh, it's tedious to get it up and down. So, our design, our plan, is to use an actuator. So this is actually the actuator that I'm going to be using. What it is, it's basically very simple. It just, you have a motor and you have like a, a shaft and basically the motor, spin and zip, pull the shaft out uh, in one direction and bring it back down. So basically we're going to use this to push the back of the bed up and down and yeah hopefully it's gonna work next step is basically to install it so i made a whole floor of the ambulance because uh, because it's too long i was gonna install it the crew that when it deployed go almost up to the ceiling and push the bed up so i have I have temporarily installed the linear actuator because I know that I'll have to do some adjustment in terms of angle and probably left and right. So right now it's just held by uh, C-clamps, two C-clamps on the bottom and on top it's just uh, uh, held by the actual bracket that's going to be, uh, that's going to stay on the, on the bed. I have also here are the two wires that are used to control the strut of the linear actuator and I should have now 12 volt here so basically if I connect those two in one direction it should go in if I connect them in the other direction it should go out so oh my god are you nervous yeah I'm really nervous Oh my god! Oh my god! I'm gonna stop here because I can tell uh, the actuator need to be moved forward, otherwise I'm going to hit the, the frame of the door. It's working though. Yeah. You? Ah! <laughs> I like how you always doubt of me. Last night we did something really exciting. We installed the dinette table 
including the actuator that Greg built a custom um, kind of like sliding case for. And like I always do at the end of the night, I went inside, took my SD card out of my camera, went to load it and put it on our hard drive. And it said it was corrupt. I don't know why. I'm still trying to see if there's a way that I can get my pictures and videos from all of yesterday back. But as of right now, I haven't been able to. So I've got nothing on the build of the dinette. So I'm just gonna have to show it to you and explain it. And yeah, here we go. All right, so here we are. We also made this um, piece for the back of the dinette using leftover scrap wood from our counter and our dinette. Um, these were pieces that we just glued together and I'm really happy with how that turned out. But, dun -da -da -da, the table. Okay, so as you can see, we still have a lot of unfinished electrical outlets, different things. So bear with me here as I kind of try to explain everything to you guys. So what you're looking at right now, without the mattress obviously, because back here we've got our bed frame, and after I show you the table and how that works, we're going to get the mattress in, and I'm going to fully show you both positions on the bed and table. But let's do the table first. So table. Right now this is like daytime position, bed is up, and you have full access to the dinette. But as you can see, the bed would not be able to come down if the table was in the up position. So Greg has put it on an electric actuator. It is what is going to take our table up and down. So right down here we have our switches for the table and the bed, right next to our uh, control center for our surround sound. And with the magic of editing, here is the incredible transformation of this part of the ambulance. Here's the bed and table going from the daytime position to nighttime position. We are so close to being done with this build. In our next video, we're gonna wrap up the plumbing and hopefully, if there are no surprises, we'll be moving in.